Welcome to the tutorial on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show named hooks and the macro change. So we've been moving through a series of videos on changers within Harlow. We previously saw how some macros produce links. We can use a link, link rerun, and a number of other sister macros. We've also started to see how we can use things like text style, text size, text color to produce changer values which allow us to apply to hooks various changes such that the text changes its visual presentation. And we've now seen through an extended example in a previous video how we can chain them together. We can chain changers together such that the same text has a text style, text color, and text size. However, there might be situations where instead of using variables, we might want to use those variables for other purposes. That is, we can achieve the same effect through other functionality within Harlow by naming hooks. So previously, when we were looking at hooks, we were using them in macros. We'd have a macro, and then immediately after there would be a hook. We saw it with the if macro, we've seen it with text style, we've seen it with a large number of other macros. There might be some cases, though, where for more advanced patterns, instead of using a variable or using necessarily a macro, we want to give the hook a name, and then we're going to do something with it later. That is, instead of defining things initially, we set up the text, we give it a name, and then we apply it later. So this is a very different approach than what we've seen. Through previous videos, especially when we're using the set macro, we would define a bunch of variables, and then we would immediately use them. What if instead we reversed it, where we use things, and then sometime later we change them? In fact, the change macro is incredibly powerful in this regard. But let's jump into this first example. So usually we use a macro with a hook, but what if we gave the hook a name and then we did something with it later? Now this is going to be really, really useful for particular use cases. But before we do that, let's talk about naming hooks. So to name a hook, we need a hook. And as a reminder, a hook is open and closing square brackets around something, other macros, text, whatever we have. And then when we want to give it a name, we use the bar. Previously, we saw the bar when we were defining columns within Harlow. In this case, the bar, some type of name following the rules of variables, so no spaces, but upper and lowercase letters and numbers. And then the greater than or equal than sign. In this case, the name starts over here, or what Harlow calls it, the tag. We're giving it a name tag, such that then we can tag it later to do something with it. So this named hook right here is a tag we will later access. So the bar, the name, and then this right here. And notice I'm not defining any variables before this. I'm just saying at some later point, I might use this and this hook has a name. So the thing I'm using next is down here with change. The change macro allows us to reference the tag. This is the use of the question mark right here instead of the dollar sign or the underscore name tags are used with question mark to apply to whatever is associated with that hook. And then we can change it somehow. So previously we saw with text size, text style, text color, that we could chain all those changers together and use them, or we could apply them immediately to different hooks. But what if again, we wanted to write a bunch of stuff and then change it later? That's exactly what this allows us to do. So because this is named name hook and I'm referencing right here, notice the colors are helping us pick these things out. I'm saying, hey, at the end of this passage, change something, go find whatever is associated with this hook and apply this right here. And this is any changer value. Again, as we saw with looking at text size, text style, text color, they are changers and they produce changer values. So the change macro works with changers we tell it to go find something and then we apply some type of changers to it. In this case, text size. So let's see this in action. Let's build and play. Notice this is larger. So the macro was actually way down here, but it applied up here, went to go find it and applied that change. So using the knowledge we already know of changer macros, look at changer values. Now we're using the change macro, not changer macros, to change something. Let's look at a different example. What if we did this? What if we said, hey, go ahead and create a variable. Save this text color is blue. Immediately use this right here as a variable and apply it to a hook. 
But what if I just decide later, um, actually what I want to do is I want to use that same value, but I've forgotten what the variable name is. Maybe I got a really complicated story or I'm, I'm just lazy. I just want to use it again. I don't want to go look for it. Well, we can do the same thing I just showed you before. I can give a name to a hook, but then because the variable has a changer value in it, again, why the things that produce from macro start to be really important, we can reference it down here and just say, hey, okay, I know at some point I have a variable called ex and it contains whatever styles, some styles. So, hey, for another hook right here, using its tag right here, refer back to the value of what's in ex. So change something based on a value saved in a variable defined somewhere else previously. Don't really care where. So notice that as we get into using more complicated patterns, what macros produce, links, changers, other things, becomes really important because now we can start to apply that with concepts we've now learned in this video. We can name hooks and use things like the change macro, and there are other macros, to allow us to reference that hook, apply different colors, and in future videos, do other things. With our ability to name hooks, instead of defining things initially and then changing it, we can define it and change it later. So two different patterns emerge that allow us to work with things within Harlow 3.3. We can define variables first and then change things, as we saw in a previous video that applied variables to hooks, or we can give the hooks a name and change them later. Both are perfectly valid, but two different approaches to allow us to think through how we use hooks, think through content, and again, continuing to keep in mind what macros produce, links, changers, and other things coming in future videos. Thanks for watching.